Hello. Hey, Oliver. How are you doing, man? Doing amazing. How are you doing today, sir? Nice to Wonderful. See you today. Good to see you. Let me start out by begging you to not make this your last album and tour. Come on. Wow. Well, I can't make any promises because I am working on some screenplays. I'm trying to make some movies, but I will say for you, I'll consider it. That's all I want. The world needs the world needs more Oliver Tree, not less right now. The world is a horrifying, toxic place that needs more of you, my man. Wow. And uh, I'm excited about Cowboy Tears. I love what you've been shooting so, so far, where you've been doing it. The giant fucking guitar I love. Wow. Everything about it, man. Well, I'm excited for you to see my version of the Cowboy. I got a couple different variations that I think will put a new context on what it is to be a Cowboy in 2021. Nice. I, I, I do want to ask you about, um, specifically, Turn It Off, all the new videos. You you do edit and shoot your own stuff, right? You have a team of people, but it's mostly you. So to make film, it takes an army, so I'm not going to take yeah. full credit here. But yeah. from the beginning of the idea, I write all the treatments, I direct them all myself, and I walk through every step of production through the editing process. So it's very involved, and my edits take very long, like from anywhere from three months to sometimes – on Life Goes On, upwards of 11 months. It was very close to a year. We shot that in in the summer, and it came out in the spring. Uh, the, the pairing with Little Big is, is kind of perfect, because you guys are just like, that's a perfect gel, I think. Do you, are you, do you plan on working with them more, even outside of music? You're talking about uh, movies, videos, possibly screenplays incorporating them in there for an international flair? I would love to. I have some plans to be going back to Russia. I, as you may know, I lived there for four months, so I'm very locked in in that scene, and, and it's something that I am going to be touring out there. Hopefully I can do some stadium shows with them, as well as working on some future music. I'd love to do another music video again with them one day because working with them changed my perspective on making music videos and made me see the idea of really making it for the globe instead of just for people who grew up in the world that I did. They're, they're enormous there. Am I right in Russia? I mean, they're, they're royalty, they're Russian yeah. royalty, full pop stars. So when I went there, I was right at home, man. They treated me like a Russian prince. So I will be back. <laughs> how speaking of traveling, how was the Middle East? It was insane. Honestly, one of the greatest things I've ever been able to experience. Uh, I just filmed a documentary of the process, which is being edited right now. So I'm hoping that will come out anywhere from six months to six years. I don't really know what the timeline. These edits can take a very long time. But I will say we, we filmed the process, the mixing and finishing of the album process, as well as exploring Morocco and Egypt. And uh, it was, it was mind-blowing. I was going to say that. That answers my next question of where exactly you went. So a, a total of a month you were there? Yeah. It was a month out there, and I locked into a studio for part of the time. I did a lot of exploring, and I, I seen so many crazy things. It was, it was very eye-opening. That's cool. Uh, talking about this tour that's coming up, it's not going to be in Milwaukee, but you are going to be hitting Chicago, so it's going to be near us. Uh, with Swaco opening, who I just talked to a couple of weeks ago and had the – most fun conversation with that guy. Uh, how do you two meet up? Well, to tell you the truth, me and Swaco, we have the same marketing guy, this guy named Busy, who um, basically makes my life a live in hell. This guy is, you know, he's <laughs> always talking his his game, his bull spit, if you will. And this guy, he won't stop talking about Swaco. Swaco this, Swaco that, Swaco with the pre-saves. And I said, bro, I don't want to hear about Swaco. But when I was putting the tour together, I was like, all right, this guy won't stop talking about him. And, you know, I've seen Swaco's stuff all over from yeah. you know, the Instagram era to the TikTok era. He was always popping up in my feed and got to spend some time with him. He's a really awesome dude. And turns out he's not so bad. So I said, hey, why not like, bring this kid on the road? Give him a shot. You know, I'm trying to do a TikTok tour, essentially. And, and no one from TikTok sells tickets. You know, the reality is that Swaco, 347 Aiden, they've never even done any kind of shows before so it's it's something that for me is like a big deal to bring tiktok into a real world event and i expect these shows to be incredible even though you know tiktokers don't typically go to shows i think there's gonna be a chance for tiktok to be a real place in the real world and i think it's gonna be a pretty special series of shows 
that's that's a, the weird thing about the translation there between TikTok and real life. Uh, I mean, with TikTok, I mean, you're you're huge on it, 10, 10 million plus you know followers on there, but it's short clips, choppy, you know, where you're talking. I mean, your videos and your videos aren't long, long, but they're usually three, three and a half minutes, which I'm sure in the world of TikTok is like you know a full novel. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it, it's it's a tough thing to navigate, but I do. I mean, what do you think? What do you think you have to do to make this work, or to translate, or to kind of be the ambassador between a live show and the TikTok world? Well, for me, luckily, I've been focused on the live show for the last four years, so they're two totally separate things. Live shows are more like building a restaurant, and they're two separate industries. So you're not going to be able to just be big on TikTok and sell tickets, that's its own beast. So I've been doing the tour thing. I already have a big touring audience that, you know, people that travel around the country with me and come to every single show. We have a pretty diehard fan base, a cult. So the thing is that I'm not worried about it. I'm not expecting TikTok to even show up, but at least at the very least, I can bring TikTok to my fans. And also I think it's just going to be an excuse to do something really epic. I think in 10 years, people are going to look back at this lineup and be like, wow, that was crazy. How did they do that? I wish I would have went to that show. And that's that's what I'm waiting for. Uh, how far are we from the new album then? It's a good Before question. The tour? I, I keep asking every single day to the label and they won't give me a straight answer. They're always walking around, giving me some kind of, just some kind of fake answer. Basically, they haven't fully approved of it. I've submitted it. They haven't given a date. We'll see. There's a world where they may not even want to release it. I'm not really sure, but I'm imagining if the fans ask for it and demand it, really. There's a good chance it will come out in the next year to two or three, maybe four years. Like Ugly is Beautiful took four years to come out. So we'll see. I was going to say, yeah, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be surprising. And it wouldn't be, if for a second, I'm like, all right, you're kidding. But comparatively speaking, you're, you're probably right. You might be right. And that would give you, I guess that would give you your time. To, so then it would, being a last album wouldn't be so uh, odd, I guess. Yeah. We'll see I, what happens. But, you know, yeah. all in good time. Only time will tell. I do appreciate and love the fact that you do, and I'm looking forward to this when you're talking about making films, making even short films. You create your own world. You do such a great job of creating your own look, but very much creating your own world, which isn't easy to do, isn't easy to maintain, and sometimes isn't easy to market because you lose people. And like you said, you have a cult following, so they get it. People get it, and more and more people are getting it now. But... To that extent, how much of you are human and how much of you are alien? Well, I think there's a common misconception. Uh, A lot of people will ask me about aliens, and not a lot of people know this, but I actually don't believe in aliens. Uh, I did make the song Alien Boy, but that's more a comparison to feeling alienation. So I don't actually believe in aliens. I don't think they exist. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I, I don't know. Little Ricky is an artist that I work with who presents himself as an alien, and I'll just say, I don't know, we, we don't see eye to eye often, and I am working on his his mixtape. I've been helping produce it and helping bring it to life, and, and he's an incredible artist, but I don't really know where he's going with this whole alien thing. What about the unexplained, though? There's so much of the unexplained. Balloon. Oh, to the pros. I got, <laughs> I got movies to make. I got albums to finish, you know, <laughs> deadlines to meet, so... I, one can only, you know, spend the rest of their life going down the rabbit holes, but those those are for the conspiracy theorists. I'm just going to stay focused on the art. Your movie angle uh, obviously interests me, but what, uh, what have you been watching lately? Anything new or are you kind of going back a long time? I really don't watch a lot right now. The reality is that um, when I write my screenplays, I'll just play movies in the background, all my favorite stuff and things that pertain to the the actual genre or the film I'm writing. I've written two so far that I've finished. And uh, I kind of just play them in the background. I haven't really given myself any time to watch movies as of late because things have been getting a little crazy and I'm just trying to focus fully on music. But, you know, I have so many favorite movies, so many favorite directors like Wes Anderson, the cliche is Wes Anderson, um, yeah. Quentin Tarantino, those are like the American kind of guys who have made their own genre with it. But, you know, I'm a big fan of the A24 films, uh, the Safi Bros, um, you know, so many different people. Jean-Pierre Jeanette uh, from France is amazing. Michelle Gondry, 
uh, the list goes on and on, but there's so many incredible filmmakers right now. It's, it's a great time to be making movies. And I think it's really going fusion mode and, and genres going out the window. And I feel the same with music. I'm excited about it, man. I'm excited about your future. Thank you so much for the time. Uh, keep me posted on, on all the, the movies and I'll, you know, keep an eye and ear out for Cowboy Tears. But Oliver, uh, so great to talk to you again, man. And again, please don't make this your last. You got to hit Milwaukee once. I know. I'll try to come back. I'm trying to go to a Brewers game. We'll see what happens. Maybe we can get some brewskis. Let's do it. All the best, Oliver. Thank you for the time, buddy. Have a great day, bro.